Uh, this year, we are discussing about sector coupling, how to regulate convergence. Uh, in this session, we have a paper by three authors, Edson Gonsalves, Joyce Adutra, and Bruno Rosende. The title of the paper is Coupling Power and Natural Gas Sector in Brazil. Is convergence possible in terms of market reforms? The case of reservoir to wire power plants. So now, um, Edson, you have 12 minutes, then we will give the room to the discussion. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Juan. The idea of this, this paper uh, we we use as a case study the case of reservoir to wire power plants in Brazil, uh, attempting to to make some connections between the two sectors, power and natural gas sectors in Brazil. Uh, what we have more in the, nowadays, we have at, at the same time now in Brazil, attempts to to reform both sectors natural gas and power. Uh, these reforms are under discussion in our parliament here in Brazil. And one of the, the main goals of both reforms is the connection between the sectors because we have at the same time a kind of dysfunctioning regulation to, to improve the connection between the sectors and we have some uh, relevant reserves of natural gas onshore and offshore in our press salt in Brazil. Uh, natural gas associated with oil offshore. And uh, we have to deal with the energy transition. And we consider here in Brazil that the natural gas will help us in this transition because natural gas uh, is more dispatchable and uh, is easy to dispatch and uh, is a, a source of energy more clean in comparison with other thermal sources available. Uh, so we, we have this case here about a kind of regulation that uh, between two sectors that is not well connected now, and how to, to improve this regulation, considering the, the parameters that we have now in Brazil. About the research questions, analyze if the current economic regulation meets the criteria of efficiency and sustainability for enterprises with the R2W core businesses, the reservoir to, to our core business. Uh, we have now that under Brazilian current regulation concerning e energy auctions, we do not take into account properly the situation uh, or how a reservoir to our power plant works. Uh, what's a, what is a reservoir to our power plant? It's a kind of, of thermal power plant that uses, uh, uh, that's connected directly with a, a well of natural gas. Okay, uh, we have some good experiences here in Brazil. We, we have too many, few firms in this market now, but we see a uh, huge potential to improve this market. So under the, our current energy auction rules in Brazil, uh, we do not have a good representation for reservoir to our power, thermal power plants. When we calculate the a cost benefit index in this kind of auctions, and uh, our physical dispatch, the operational research problem that is solved by our system operator here in Brazil, does not take into account the how a thermal power plant with this configuration works. Uh, the current model that our operator uses uh, take into account only a conventional power plant that uses natural gas. Okay, this is the, the main, main questions here. What about the environment, the regulatory environment that we have? Since 2013, we have uh, some projects of law, some proposals from our governments, independent from the, some, any ideological or party perspective we have some initiatives attempting to improve the, the natural gas market and the oil market, both markets. 
The last one was a project of law from 2013. In Portuguese, is a thing like gas para crescer. In English, gas to growth program or a thing like, like gas to natural gas to development program, a thing like this. And uh, this kind of governmental initiatives are associated with a, a program of investment performed by our national oil company, Petrobras. Petrobras, because the, the big corruption scandal, Petrobras faces until now uh, difficulties concerning its financial situation. And Petrobras is performing since some years ago, a big investment program. And Petrobras is going out, is getting out for, from some businesses that are not related to the core business, exploration and production of oil and natural gas. Okay. And as I said, uh, we see that the, the use of natural gas is important for us uh, concerning to, to the penetration of renewables, to, to the transition of our energy matrix here in Brazil. Okay. So this kind of projects, this kind of enterprises, uh, reserve what to our thermal power plants, we see uh, as a, a way to monetize upstream gas production and to, to improve our conditions considering the, the transition to use more and more renewables in our matrix. Uh, some things, uh, some points about the, the evolution of regulatory framework considering specifically the natural gas sector here in Brazil. We started with, uh, sorry, we started with uh, the petroleum law, the oil law in Brazil. Uh, at that time, we did not have any regulation concerning natural gas by itself or considering the oil market by itself too. We have a vertically integrated industry uh, dominated by Petrobras or, or our national oil company, as I said. After we have in 2000, uh, mainly due uh, the the risk of a density in the supply of the energy at that time, it was in the end of the, the government of, of President Fernando Henrique Cardoso, we have a program developed by our government called PPT in Portuguese. It's a thing like priority program of thermal power plants, a thing like this in English. It was a government, governmental program uh, performed at that time uh, that allow, allowed the construction of some thermal power plants, uh, some accords with Bolivia for the supply of natural gas. And at the time, Petrobras uh, dealed with all the risks involved, including exchange rate risks and price risks. And we, at that time, we initiated here in Brazil uh, our long-term PPAs, our long-term purchase power agreements with thermal power plants and uh, our pool of energy distribution firms here in Brazil in our regulated market for, for electricity. After we have uh, some regulations from the Regulatory Commission of Oil and Gas, ANP in Portuguese, it's a thing like a National Agents for Oil and Gas. It's our regulatory commission at federal level for oil and gas here in Brazil. We have some initiatives uh, related to access regulation and some related to some tariff structure where it's possible. Finally, in 2009, we have the GOS law, we have a, a specific law for the gas sector, but we did not have any concern about market design. Okay. We had, again, a vertically integrated industry, and no network expansion. In 2017, we have uh, other efforts uh, within the Gas for Growth program, as I said, and, uh, and some efforts to, to establish a new legal and regulatory framework for natural gas in Brazil. In 2019, last year, finally, uh, the government of President Bolsonaro changed the name of the program, but the, the main ideas remain here. Uh, an idea, ideas related to the promotion of competition where it's possible, harmonization of state and federal regulations, because here in Brazil is not the, the main goal of my presentation here today, 
but we have different rules for transmission, for tra the, the, tra the transportation of the gas at federal level, and different rules for the distribution of the gas, natural gas, uh, rules that are here in Brazil in a uh, state or province level. Okay, we have different regulations here. It's a problem. Uh, and the main goal of my or of our work uh, that I'm presenting for you today, the integration of gas sector with power and, and industrial sector. Okay, some initiatives that any, that will enable to improve this coupling between the sectors that we see that's important for us. Following uh, something about the modeling issue, issues, we built some building blocks in our in our strategy here. Uh, the main goals was to do were related to to do how to deal with it, the uncertainties involved in a reservoir to our thermal power plant. So we developed some simulation models, and these simulation models we can we run these models, uh, and we are able to to compare with the current regulation, okay, the results, because we can build with our models some counterfactual analysis uh, about how the sector will work with some different rules. What rules? Different rules for some requirements of ENP capital expenditures, for example, some different rules regarding the dispatch models used by our uh, national system operator for electricity, for example, and uh, some different rules regarding to a better representation for R2W projects in the models currently in use here in Brazil. All right, this is the, the main modeling issues. The building blocks of our models, we developed uh, an stochastic dynamic dual programming model, SDDP model, uh, similar to the model that uh, is run every week by our system operator here in Brazil, but it's a model that includes uh, a good representation for a reserve watch wire thermal power plant, all right? The model currently used in Brazil does not take into account uh, a good representation for a reserve watch wire enterprise. They have a good representation only for conventional thermal power plants. We have also an EP model, a model that simulates the expenses in the, the phase of exploration development of new reserves, all right? Because here in Brazil, it's a kind of specific thing here in our country. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, to, to do an investment in a thermal power plant that will use natural gas, you have to prove to the regulator, to the energy regulator, electricity regulator, that we have enough reserves to really uh, have the energy to attend the, the demand, okay? And the demand that uh, will come from the dispatch of our optimization problem run by the system operator, okay? Uh, also, we developed an evaluation, a stochastic evaluation model to simulate the effects in the cash flows for a firm with this arrangement and a model for auctions, okay? Because the, the current cost benefit index used in our auctions here in Brazil does not in, take into account these specific things related to a reserve watch to our power plant, okay? Some results are going to the end of the presentation to comply with the time. Uh, we see, we saw that the, the current auction rules for electricity here in Brazil does not capture the real format of the cost function involved in this kind of project, okay? They take into account only a cost function for a conventional problem, project, okay? A, a cost function that has a take or pay level, all right? and a different price for a different consumption of natural gas. It's a kind of linear form like this in this picture. We saw 
uh, according to our results, that a uh, best representation must be a, a kind of piecewise function, all right? A kind of function linear in some parts with some jumps between some levels of production of natural gas, all right? It, it is because the time that we have to develop a new field to make available some amount of natural gas to be used in the power plant and to be dispatched by the operator. Here we have a, a real exam, example from using some data provided by a partner, uh, a firm here in Brazil that operates under, the, under this model. We have a few firms under this kind of operation. And you see the, the real format of the cost function. That's a, a cost function different from the format that is used in the, the modeling of our auctions nowadays. And finally, to comply with the time, some policy alternatives and conclusions. As some recommendations uh, in increasing order of complexity uh, from the, the most easy to implement to more difficult to implement, uh, we have the change of the calculation of cost benefit index to allow a good representation for the R2W costs, all right? To, to make the process more fair for in the competition, the auction. Uh, another recommendation is to change the, the format of the auction by itself, okay? Change the rules, the main rules. And uh, that's a thing that we are dealing since some years ago until now, a broader reform of the sector, both sectors, natural gas and energy, to allow more competition. It's another specific thing here in Brazil. We have auctions for different sources of energy. Outside Brazil, we have only energy auctions. Here in Brazil, we have auctions for energy from thermal power plants. We have auctions for energy from renewables. And we have auctions for energy from hydropower and things like this. Okay, it's a kind of different thing that I believe is specific for us. And uh, what more concluding? We see, we saw and see, we, and we are seeing because this, we are researching this thing until now, that the discontinuity of the cost is not an issue by itself because it's a thing that we can see in other types of projects, like co-generators, for example. Uh, and may become an issue if the auction design does not allow generators to meaningfully express their costs. Okay, so our main conclusion is that a market auction design um, probably will cope with this kind of problem, the problem of the discontinuity of the cost function. And concluding, finally, we see that the R2W ventures, the reservoir thermal power plants, have a great potential to contribute to the Brazilian energy matrix, given the potential that we have regarding natural gas onshore and offshore in the press out, the competitive advantages of these kind of projects, and uh, because maybe it will be useful for us during the transition for using more and more renewables. Uh, and uh, it's a guarantee of energy supply for us. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Now we move to the discussions. We have two discussions from FSR Energy, Alex Fail and Ivan Atikovic. Okay. First of all, um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ivan Atikovic, and uh, today, um, yeah, we. We'll, I will uh, discuss with uh, with all of you this uh, this very interesting uh, paper. Um, um, it was my pleasure to to work with uh, Alexandra Fail, and uh, for me this was um, especially interesting because since I uh, started working at the FSR gas area, uh, I'm working on our sector coupling platform that you can you can visit on our website where actually you can see. Uh, uh, very interesting, uh, uh, let's say, uh, publications uh, on the topics uh, under sector coupling. 
and uh, and actually you are welcome and uh, to send us uh, interesting uh, publication in future and also uh, um, we, we we want to make it uh, better and better to improve it so yeah you are welcome uh, and invited to, to to come to us so uh, um, uh, I will start first uh, uh, with uh, with uh, positive aspects and something that was, uh, uh, let's say, very interesting for uh, Alex and myself. So first, I would say that uh, this paper is very well structured and uh, and and uh, shows the good domain of English. Uh, what we could suggest is maybe in the introduction to give some overview of um, of uh, uh, previous work. Uh, on this topic. So uh, just to, let's say, uh, make a kind of introduction of some previous projects and works uh, and, and different models, because I think it's always good to, to, to compare different models, to compare assumptions, to if the models are, uh, if assumptions are similar or uh, better to say if models are similar, then it's always good to make comparison between results and then in the future work, it helps improvement of the model. Uh, because as we know, we, we always in the modeling, we start with a simple model and then we upgrade it on and on. So work of, of, of other authors could help a lot. For sure, this is a, a sector, sector coupling platform. And these days we are talking a, a lot about smart sector integration is a challenge um, all over the world. So uh, this is a very relevant theme uh, that uh, actually um, highlights uh, challenges uh, in Brazil as well. So also, also um, what we can, uh, let's say, uh, um, point out uh, these days, it's, uh, it's uh, necessary to, to have a well-organized policy and regulatory environment. And also um, all new ideas, alternatives, how to facilitate uh, the sector coupling are welcome. So this paper um, actually explore, explores one of the possible ideas, possible, um, uh, let's say, uh, ways how to facilitate sector coupling. Also, it captures the value of, of the business model and, of course, um, potential benefits uh, for entire uh, energy, energy system. And the good thing uh, is um, proposes new simulation models that, uh, um, as always, um, actually include uh, some uncertainties uh, related to, to, to this type of, uh, of uh, power plants. Of course, uh, um, uh, case of Brazil is, uh, is uh, specific, so um, um, we, we wanted to highlight uh, these uh, specific things. Uh, what, we can say, what we could say is that um, um, Brazilian electricity transmission grid is very favorable to, to this kind of concept. And of course, there is, uh, in, in, at the moment, uh, the use utilization of natural gas in, is, is in favor. But of course, um, as we could um, see also in, in the paper and read uh, in some other publications, uh, there is absence of a gas market and transportation and distribution networks. So it means that uh, alternatives, finding uh, alternatives is necessary uh, to, to monetize uh, uh, natural gas as a fuel. And, and Alex will uh, continue. Thank you. Thank you, Ivana. Uh, congratulations, Edson, on the very good work. Uh, I will follow my colleague Ivana and I have a couple preliminary comments and then I'll try to highlight some points that the authors may consider for further investigation and, uh, and work. And thank you Ivana for continuing with the slides uh, in, the, in the screen for me. Uh, 
Uh, well, conceptually, the flexibility provided by gas balances well the intermittence of renewable sources. And this is a growing thing in, in Brazil with the advent of uh, solar and wind. But this depends heavily on the flexibility on the fuel side. And, and this is key uh, when we are talking about the relevance of an alternative like reservoir to gas and if you're, if you're going to actually use the gas or not, where the gas will be when you're not dispatched and, and so on. So uh, maybe some words on that might be helpful to understand a little bit uh, what's going on in, in Brazil. And one thing is to participate in the auction and, and win a contract. Another thing is to be dispatched and, and, and how the market will work and, and what are the consequences are for your revenue. In the case of Brazil, the advance of a, a carbon-based uh, generation, like the use of uh, a gas, will affect the mix, it will grade the mix, we could say, uh, and that, that will increase the environmental footprint of the electricity sector. It might, it might help in some, some aspects, but uh, it might not be seen uh, as such as a good thing uh, when you talk uh, outside Brazil. So we know we, we are very clean. We have the, the best mix of the, the major economies in, in Brazil, but uh, maybe we will go in a direction which is not the direction other countries are following. And that might need some word on, on that uh, when you go outside the country to show in a, in a paper. Uh, long-term contracts, uh, you mentioned the, the long-term PPAs are also a, a key aspect uh, here uh, to be mentioned. It could cause a lock-in effect, or somehow a, 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 some kind of a lock-in effect because it could prevent, uh, it could, we could use the, the gas in long-term contracts for 20 years, 25, 30 years. And then other alternatives to supply the same kind of service might not come uh, or not be uh, not be vi viable vi be viable. Sorry about my English. Such as storage and, and demand side management. And also, uh, you may use this gas now for a, a reservoir to wire service in a long term PPA. And then once the gas market is established, for for instance, five years, ten years from now, you might be locked into a contract that that you cannot get out of, and you may it may be more profitable to go to another thing. Uh, going ahead and in the following slide, trying to, to keep in the time, please let me know if I'm doing too much, I'm talking too much. Uh, some points for further investigation. The first thing is why actually the reservoir to wire uh, uh, form of a generation stands out when you're in this confusing regulatory environment uh, is something that could use a little bit uh, more of uh, text. What has been done until now in Brazil and elsewhere? Are there similar models? Any comparison regarding results? So uh, a little bit more work on the review process that could uh, be in the beginning of uh, the paper. Second, how hard, how complex is the, actually the adaptation of the auction models and the rules to capture this cost function? Is it something that is impossible to be done or is it uh, something that is easy? Is it, it is key for, for the paper that this adaptation uh, must be done, but is it a difficult thing, something that demands too much time? I understand there is an L, there is a APE, there is MME, there is CEPEL, there is an S, just to name a few of the institutions that are involved in that, but that doesn't mean uh, beforehand that is an impossible thing to be done. It, it looks like it could be done, but we cannot see from the text if it is actually an impossible thing. And are there risks for cross-sectoral subsidies? So this is uh, a very interesting thing. So we are uh, making a reservoir to wire a power plant uh, feasible, uh, injecting electricity in the system, but aren't we uh, uh, just providing a, a cross-sectoral flow of money from the electricity sector to the gas sector or vice versa? So maybe something in this context should be interesting. 
and also how representative is the reservoir to wire potential in the Brazilian context. It looks like it's it's good, it's it's big. Uh, there is a, a large potential for gas, but the actual number is not there when compared to other sources of uh, electricity. Uh, and once the adaptation is actually made, supposing it, it is made, how competitive are those alternatives when compared to other conventional gas power plants and also with the current options? Uh, we can see in one, in one of the last graphs that there is competitivi competitivity, but is it possible to offer some more numbers? And actually in the last graph, it looks like there is not uh, a number for the initial cost of installation. It, it begins in zero and that, that is uh, actually interesting. If, if not something that should be reviewed. In the case of reservoir to wire power plants, uh, this case is made in the paper, but there is another question right in the, in the beginning, which is, is convergence possible in times of market reforms? I think it is, I think it's the best uh, moment to do when you're reforming a market to, to seek this integration, but actually there is not a word on that, on the answer for for this question. Uh, in, in, okay, and just to, to finish this, uh, some more numbers would be interesting, some more work on the results and conclusions regarding those numbers and, and showing um, a little bit more of those conclusions. Congratulations on the good work and my compliments to the authors and FGV. Thanks for the opportunity of uh, this review. Thanks to our moderator, Juan and uh, Irina for the administrative uh, aspects to help uh, us a lot. Thank you very much. I would like to, to thank you, Ivana and Alex, for the comments. I, I really totally agree with, the, with all of the comments uh, about uh, some improvements that we, we can do and some improvements that I believe it's easy to, to implement here in our, our work about the, for example, as you said, the introduction of the paper, the motivation, some previous work, works, the previous literature, different models, uh, some more information about the results and discussion, and uh, about the, the questions that you highlighted on your comments uh, brilliantly in my point of view. Uh, for example, we can really discuss more in spite of our using a specific case study, we really have to discuss more about the convergence by itself. As you said, as Alex said, we can see that is possible. That is the moment here in Brazil, in spite of our difficulty regarding the the action of the politicians and the, the difficulties that you are facing regarding the COVID-19. I believe you, you are reading about our situation. And uh, I totally agree with the, the discussion related to, to the path that we have to, to seek, as you said, because here in Brazil, and I'm not totally sure about uh, the current government is taking the situation into account. Here in Brazil, we have some options to to use in this kind of transition. We, in this, we have we can uh, seek, for example, different paths because here in Brazil, we have tried at the, at the past some alternatives regarding different renewables, uh, ethanol and uh, bio, biodiesel, for example, we have some alternatives, some uh, governmental programs that we tried at the past, and that we, they are competitors of the natural gas by construction, and they have to, to discuss these situations. And uh, a final comment that uh, I think that I really consider important too, it's about the, the long-term contracts, as, as uh, Alex uh, said, commented, this is a kind of problem for us in Brazil in the transition, in, the, in reforming in these markets, because you have to, to deal with this kind of legacy contracts. I don't know a, a good word in English, maybe legacy contracts. 
because uh, we have contracts signed at the past, long-term contracts between the parts. Here in Brazil, the duration, the tenor is about 20, between 20 and 30 years, really long, too much time. And you have to deal with these contracts in, in this challenge of reforming these markets. It's uh, another important issue, certainly. So finally, I totally agree with the, the suggestions. Some of them I, we are perceived by us uh, before, and we will implement these the suggestions. And, and I would like to thank you again for the comments, Ivana and Alex. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if you, the discussions have any further question, comment to make, or otherwise we just close the session and the day. Um, okay, we will I, thank you very much for the authors. Or oh, Alex, do you have a question? I, I don't know if, uh, if we have uh, some minutes, uh, it would be interesting to ask uh, I mean, a question. Uh, yeah, you must be tired because you have a whole day being in this uh, kind of uh, work. <laughs> because I believe, I believe it's night here, here in Europe, for example. Here in Brazil, it's the midday, it's yeah, the lunchtime yeah. here in Brazil. I mean, feel free. I mean, uh, if, of course, the audience, if anyone wants to leave, it's okay. Uh, otherwise, we can just spend um, five more minutes. It's not a problem at all. So, Edson. You want to raise yeah. questions? Okay. Uh, the, the thing is about the, the convergence of these uh, two markets, gas market and electricity market. We are in the middle of reforms in both segments, and we are in the middle of this pandemic uh, and, and other things happening in Brazil also. Uh, do you see a possible light in the end of this tunnel? Uh, you uh, working with that uh, in Brazil in, in depth, do you see a possibility in the near future for a coupling of these segments actually? We really see uh, that's possible after the, the situation of the COVID-19. We see that's really possible, the, the convergence. Because okay. uh, we we face we are facing here, but we have been facing, in fact, during the last decades, uh, situations regarding the uh, high higher risk uh, of a lack in the supply of energy, the risk of blackouts, people uh, without energy. And uh, because of this situation, we see that uh, there is a, a possibility, a high possibility, high probability of implementation of this kind of initiatives in Brazil after the COVID-19 situation. In spite mm -hmm. of, as you said, uh, that we have to take into account the environmental question, because here in Brazil, we have competitors who have ethanol, uh, some biofuels, we have competitors, but uh, natural gas, we have the reserves and uh, the this, uh, this situation for us is a situation in where if our economy started to work, uh, seeking for levels of GDP that we have in the past and in Brazil in the past, in the last decade, 10 years ago, we will face probably with no discussion about face uh, the risk of a lack in the supply of energy. Thank so because much. of this situation, I believe that we will uh, continue to pursue this, this arrangement. Thank you.